I recently bought a new headset that I'm mostly satisfied with, except I would really like the convenience of streaming music wirelessly. Instead of buying a more expensive headset, I cut the cord and went to work to create a Bluetooth headset adapter. That's what I'm showing you today, let's get started. At first I looked at all the parts needed to make an adapter from scratch, but I realized I could get most of the circuitry needed in a much smaller package by modifying a cheap pair of Bluetooth earbuds. I ordered these ones from China for 9 bucks. To get a look at what we're working with, I ripped open the headset. The advantage of converting a pre-existing solution is that we'll achieve our goal in a much smaller, cheaper and faster manner. We don't need to find our own circuits for lithium-ion battery charging and overvolt protection and it comes with working buttons and a microphone for taking calls. Gathering all the parts on my own would significantly increase the total size of the Bluetooth audio adapter. The plan is to rewire the audio cable so they no longer go to the earbuds, instead they'll go to a female audio jack. That means I can stream music to any headset and audio equipment I want. Before soldering I use my multimeter while playing music to find the positive and negative leads of the audio signal. These are the only points we care about to transmit music wirelessly and they need to be wired from the Bluetooth chip to the audio jack. At first I connected both negative audio leads but only one is actually necessary. I ended up removing one of these later on. Thin audio wires come with an insulation lacquer on the outside. I simply burned this off with a lighter so the wires could accept the solder. I recommend cutting the audio cables longer than you think you need to get some room for mistakes. Trust me. That always happens. After thinning the wires and the female audio jack, it's just a matter of holding them together and lightly touching with a soldering iron. The solder connection on such thin wires happens almost instantly. Now just to make sure everything worked at this point, I connected my USB oscilloscope to the Bluetooth adapter. Then I started playing a 20Hz sine wave on both the left and right audio channels. You can of course connect a headset or speaker and play some music to test the headset. I just used an oscilloscope because I wanted to visualize the signal transmission. Now that the electronics worked, it was time to increase the juice. I wanted to get some more playing time, so I switched out the standard battery with one that has about 3 times the capacity. This increases the battery life from 4 to 11 hours. To make sure all the wires stayed in place, I added a few blobs of hot glue to act as a strain relief on the solder joints. The original buttons work great in the original casing, but they won't do in the new one. I removed the metal foil buttons and replaced them with sturdier tactile push buttons. To solder these, I bent two of the button legs at 90 degrees and snipped off the other two legs. I did this because there isn't too much room to work at. Again, the solder joint is made by thinning both the push button leads and the solder pads before holding the button in place and lightly touching the solder tin with a hot iron. I'm using Fusion 360, a free program from Autodesk to design the case. I wanted everything to fit together as snug as possible, as that makes for a smaller adapter. You can find both schematics and downloadable 3D files in the video description. While 3D printing, I recommend flipping the lid 180 degrees, so the outside of the case is printed as the top layer. This makes it look much cleaner. Making something as tiny as possible proved to be a challenge, so I had to go through several iterations of the design before I was happy with how everything looked and fit together. The end result came out really good. Now it's finally time to put everything together. Most parts are simply clamped in place by the case. I added hot glue to the audio jack and a magnet. These magnets hold the Bluetooth adapter onto the side of the headset. Before closing everything up, I added a small amount of hot glue along the seam of the bottom case. To avoid the adapter hanging down from the headset, I fastened a couple of magnets with black electrical tape. And I made a shortened audio cable that goes from the headset itself to the Bluetooth adapter. That's it. Connect the Bluetooth adapter to whatever headset or speaker system you like and you can finally rock out to your favorite tunes without feeling constrained by a pesky wire. Thanks for watching. As always, leave a like, a comment, and subscribe for more videos coming your way.